Well, the off week did, you know, help us prepare. I think, uh, you know, uh, maybe more conscientious game plan as as you work, you know, late into the night every week. Uh, sometimes you still don't feel like you have have had enough time and maybe to check and balance that game plan. But uh, you know, we're in the process of winding up that game plan and and having the, <clears throat> you know, the final pieces put together, both on the uh, defensive side and the offensive side and and then again on special teams. So I think the bye helps you with that and and with some injuries that, uh, you know, hopefully are healing up. You know, it's if, if you uh, had your way, you you would probably have that bye after game six, uh, realistically. Um, and then, you know, a lot of teams are playing 12 games now and some teams are having two byes. So I think there's a lot of uh, questions out there when the best time for the bye is. Obviously, the the best time is when you're the least healthy, but you can never predict that. I believe the offense is, is continuing to evolve, and, and we're, we've been able to get our tight ends much more involved this season, specifically the last four or five games. And I think that's always been one of our goals. And, and you know, both tight ends that have been playing a lot are very athletic players, so why not give them the ball, you know, in, in some maybe a surprise attack or or something where they can do something with the ball besides, you know, a vertical route or an outbreak route, those types of things that we do every day. But, you know, some other ways to get those guys a football. And, and that's true with our running backs and wide receivers as well. So we are, uh, again, I probably will always be in the process because you change your game plan to a certain degree per opponent. So you're always evolving. You're always adding and subtracting certain things that you do within our offensive scheme. Well, I, I think this is what it's all about. I think, you know, these are the two, in my opinion, the two gems of the conference. And there's, there's some great schools in this conference. And, but I really think academically and, and everything that the Big Sky stands for, it's within the state of Montana. So that brings, you know, I think an extra flavor to it. And as I said last year, I, the best way for me to sum this game up is um, again, when I came back here, I did not know if the, if the governor was a Democrat or Republican, but I knew he was a Bobcat. And, and really, that's the way the state is. And Feather talked about that a little bit. You're either one or the other. And, you know, most of the people talk about it this week, you know, what they are, uh, one or the other. And so that's kind of how I approach the game. Oh, no question, because in all those states and, and the Apple Cup as well, we had some uh, dandies in that one. But uh, in all those states, you have a professional sports team and you have many more colleges and, and some junior colleges where and in Arizona, you have a lot of golf courses. So people are doing a lot of other things on, on those Saturdays. But within the state of Montana, again, you're either one or the other and you're, you're going nowhere else. On, on that particular Saturday. Uh, you know, we hope and pray we get as many Grizzlies into Bozeman as we can, and, and sometimes that's a difficult task. Um, you know, we're, our outcry is to, to come and uh, cheer for us live, uh, and, and if not, we want to hear you from your living rooms. But I guess the point is it's, you're either one or the other, and that's all that's really going on in the state, so you don't have anything to take away from this game other colleges or, or professional sports. So in that sense, it makes it even bigger. Maybe the stadiums aren't as big, but I think the passion is even greater here than any state I've ever been in. I know we had some, some Bobcat ties within the family, and uh, who knows? I don't know what kind of run the Grizz made at him. Uh, and unfortunately, that's, that's passed now. And, and I respect him as a running back. I really do. I think he's a tremendous player. And he's running behind, I think people sometimes forget, running behind a very experienced offensive line. I think three of them have over 30 starts. And, a, and the other two have upwards in the, in the 20 range. So that's a very experienced offensive line that, that our D front you know, is going to have to fight against every, every play. Well, in all major categories, you know, that particular team is one, two, or three. And, every major statistical category, which I don't know if that's ever happened before. So obviously you respect that part of it, and that is usually led by a quarterback, and uh, he does a great job. He's not running the ball 
quite as much as we've talked about today. Uh, but again, with that offensive line and, and those two running backs, he probably doesn't have to run the ball as much. Very good in play action. Uh, you know, he makes it look the same, whether he's handing it off or play action. And they did beat us with some play action last year, uh, their first touchdown. So again, our eyes have to be better than they were last year in, our, in the secondary in our linebacker play. Well, it, it is very important, you know, to be excited to play in this game. Uh, however, we did point out that we actually had a player that was kicked out of this game last year, probably because uh, the emotions got too high, and, and we have to guard against that. There's no question. Uh, and you know, this is a mature team. Obviously, we will keep reminding the team of that. But I like the senior leadership, and I don't expect that to happen again. Uh, I would be very disappointed if that did happen. Uh, up front, uh, they've been very successful uh, running the ball this year. Uh, last year, I think they were a little more uh, reliant on their QB. Uh, but this year, they've been uh, beating people uh, basically through the ground, I think. Uh, McGee's still been a big threat, but they've really, their go-to this year, I feel, is their uh, run. So uh, it's the type of situation where you want, to, uh, you want to take that away from them. It's one of their biggest assets. and. Uh, you want to take that away from them and make them uh, a little less multiple, I guess. Uh, Kirk, he's a, a big, strong back. Uh, a lot of the film, you see the first guy doesn't get him down. Uh, and there's a lot of times where that guy is making the play at the point of attack, and he's breaking that tackle, and he's taking it for extra yardage. Uh, so for him, against a guy like that, you have to take him down uh, before he gets a full head of steam, because he's a big, strong, powerful back that if you let him just keep pounding at you, he's going to probably get his shots on you. So the goal is to, uh, just like against any good running back, is you want to stop him the first time you touch him and uh, not let him get extra yards. Growing up in the state of Montana, this is why you play football, uh, is for this opportunity. Uh, you know, this, this game uh, means a lot to everybody involved. Uh, this is, I mean, both teams could be no wins. And if you win this game, uh, it would mean everything. But uh, thank, thank goodness we're not in that position, both teams. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just this is a different type of feel for a game. Uh, the stakes just always feel a lot, lot bigger. Uh, you feel like you're on a way bigger stage. Uh, the play from both sides is just, you know, you ratchet it up. It's, it's a big deal uh, for everybody involved. So. Uh, yeah, for me personally, it's just this is why uh, I play football. These games like these, uh, the moments and the, the plays, uh, are the things you'll take with you uh, for the rest of your life, and you'll remember it. For the most part, I guess since I'm a senior, they don't really text me anymore about it. Uh, yeah, I think they know where I stand on it, obviously. Uh, but yeah, my, my parents back home, uh, they still get some flack, and my uh, little brothers, they hear it from people because uh, there's actually a kid from my high school that's on the cats. Uh, so yeah, there's there's always some, you know, good-natured humor and stuff between the two sides. But uh, yeah, as far as no one sends me anything, I think uh, they they know what I think about it. So. Yeah, last year uh, uh, having the experience of actually getting beat by the cats for the first time, I've ever seen that happen since I've been watching this game. I think and. Uh, I guess that was, I believe, a really wake-up call for this program. <coughs> it, uh, I think, just enabled us to be hungry and come back and have the season we've had. I think that's played a part in it. Um, and it is. It's always, it's, it's going to be a battle the whole game. Um, it's going to come down to one play here or there that's going to set the tone, whether that's a turnover that they get or we get, um, maybe a fourth down conversion. Uh, ST always plays a big role in this game. so. Um, it's just whoever comes out and executes more, and uh, it's gonna should be what the hype's all about. I mean, it's the gr cat grizz, grizz cat, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's another game, and for us, both programs to reach their goal, we uh, both have to come out with the win. So it's gonna be a good one. As we do every week, we try to come out. Uh, I know our O line takes a lot of pride, as with us, tight ends and wide receivers, about showing cuts on film, um, just finishing guys in, in the ground. And uh, that's what we're going to come out and try to do this week. Um, I know their D-line's tough. They're going to bring it to you. 
And uh, ultimately, that, I think that could play a big role in this game and who ends up winning the trenches because you never know what the weather's going to be like down there. So um, that'll be a key part in this football game, I believe. Uh, I always think it's, yeah, I'm always learning, I feel like, in this offense. Um, I think personally for me, this offense was a better route um, than, say, Coach Houck's, where it was uh, just grinded out all game. Um, I've really enjoyed learning this offense because I've never experienced this offense coming from a Class C school um, in Fairview. So uh, uh, it's been really an enjoyment learning um, just being able to read defenses that much quicker, find the zone, um, and just be able to play at a quicker pace. You know, in every game, stopping the run is probably one of our number one priorities and getting the team into the passing situation. But also you got to remember the Bozeman offense is a pretty – Pretty versatile is that? I think that's the word I want to use. Uh, they're pretty good on both sides of the ball, so we got to be able to play both passing and running. Yeah, I've known. I actually know a couple of the guys on the team. It's something that you're born into. Coach Beer said it yesterday. The state's going to divide. You know, on this week, people are wearing the maroon and silver and blue and gold. And I was, you know, b born in Montana. All three of us. Uh, you know, you you grew up choosing a team, and you know, uh, Saturday we get to play in front of our state, and everyone's going to be watching us. So it's going to be fun. It's exciting.